a television show conducted an experiment to study what happens when buttered toast is dropped on the floor. When 43 buttered slices of toast were dropped, 23 of them landed with the butter side up and 20 landed with the butter side down. Use a 0 0.10 significance level to test the claim that toast will land with the butter side down 50% of the time. Use the p-value method. Use the normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. After that, supposing the intent of the experiment was to assess the claim that toast will land with the butter side down more than 50% of the time, write a conclusion that addresses the intent of the experiment. So let's go ahead and work on this problem here. Okay, so here is our problem. And the first thing we should look for is what is the claim? So always look where the claim is stated here. So it says here that we want to test the claim that the toast will land with the butter side down 50% of the time. So we can see here that 23 of them landed with the butter side up. So we're not concerned with that amount. We're concerned with the 20 that landed with the butter side down since that's what we are testing the claim for. So the first thing we want to do is the following, okay? Since we're using the p-value method, all right, um, we're going to identify the following. So the first thing we need to identify is what is the sample size? Okay, well, the sample size is that there are 43 buttered slices of toast. So n is equal to 43. Okay, then we need to find the point estimate. Well, the point estimate is the number that we're dealing with according to the claim. And the claim is saying that we're looking at the buttered side down toasts. So that's going to be x over n. Well, x represents 20 that landed with the butter side down out of the total sample size, which is 43. Okay. Okay. And so now we also need to figure out some other information. Okay. So the other information is is that we need to know what is the value of P and what is the value of Q. Okay, and so we'll get to that and we'll come back up and identify the following. Now, let's look at the requirements. Okay, number one, we know that there's 43 consumers that were randomly selected. So they said that they were randomly selected. Number two, okay, there is a fixed number, 43 of independent trials with two categories, the toast landing butter side up or butter side down. Number three, it says the requirements of n times p, which is greater than or equal to 5, and n times q, which is greater than or equal to 5. Well, that means we need to figure out what is the claim. Well, the claim is telling us that, uh, that it's going to land, okay, with the butter side up 50% of the time. So that tells us that the proportion e is going to, p is going to equal 0.50. And therefore, the complement is going to be 1 minus 0 0.50, which is equal to 0 0.50. And so that's how we're getting the next result here. So since we know that n is 43, p is 0 0.50, and q is 0 0.50, if we take n and multiply it by p, 43 times 0 0.5 gives us 21.5, and that is greater than or equal to 5 n times q is still is again 43 times 0.5, which we also know is greater than or equal to 5. So therefore, we know that the three requirements are satisfied. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and then state the claim in the opposite of the claim. So what is the claim? Well, the claim, again, tells us that toast will land with the butter side up 50% of the time. So that means that P is equal to 0 0.50, okay? And then what is the opposite of the claim? Well, the opposite of the claim is that P is not going to be equal to 0 
Okay, so now we want to identify the null in the alternative hypothesis. So in order to do that, okay, we're going to take our claim and the opposite of the claim. Okay, so we know that we have the null hypothesis and we know we have the alternative hypothesis. And the null hypothesis always contains the, contains the equality. So if you notice, the claim is the one that has the equality. So we know that P is going to equal 0 0.50. And therefore, the alternative hypothesis is going to be P, which is not equal to 0 0.50. OK, so now we can come over here and then answer this first question. It says, uh, let P denote the population proportion of all butter toast that will land with the butter side down when dropped. Identify the null and the alternative hypothesis. So we know that P is going to equal 0 0.50. And we know that P for the alternative is going to be not equal to 0 0.50. Let's check our answer. And there is our result. Now we need to identify the test statistic. So as we move forward, OK, what do we know? about the alternative hypothesis. Well, it has a not equal sign. So that's going to tell us whether it's a left or right or two tail. Well, since it's not equal, then this is considered a two tailed test. OK, and then what else do we need to know? We know what is the significance level, alpha. Well, we're given in a problem, alpha is 0 0.10. So we know that the significance level alpha is equal to 0 0.10. OK, so now what we need to do is we need to find the test statistic. And then we need to round it to two decimal places. So let's write out the information that we need. Well, we know that the point estimate from the problem is 20 over 43. OK, we also know that P is equal to 0 0.5. We know that Q is equal to 0 0.5. And we also know that N is equal to 43. So let's go ahead and plug this into our formula. So we have the point estimate, which is 20 over 43 minus the proportion P, which is 0 0.5. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of P, which is 0 0.5, times Q, which is 0 0.5, over N, which is 43. So let's go ahead and do that. So on our calculator, OK, so in parentheses in the numerator, we have 20 divided by 43. And then we're going to subtract 0 0.5. And that's what we get in the numerator. Now we're going to divide that by the square root. OK, so in the numerator, I'm going to put in parentheses 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. That's in parentheses on its own. And then we're dividing that by 43. And that gives us this number here. OK, and so now what we need to do is we need to round that to two decimal places. So when we round it to two decimal places, we're going to get the test statistic to be negative 0 0.46. So let's go ahead and put that number in there. So we get negative 0 0.46. Check our answer, and there is our result. OK, now we're using the p-value method. So we're not going to use the critical value method. We're going to use the p-value method. So in order to use the p-value method, it's important to draw the picture. So we're going to draw the picture. OK. And so what do we know? Well, we know that we have a test statistic, OK, that is at negative 0 0.46, and that's to the left of 0. So over here, let's go ahead and note z 
which is a test statistic, is negative 0 0.46. And so we know that this is going to be a two-tailed distribution. So that means we have another tail over here because it's a two-tailed. Okay. So that means that we want to find, in order to find the p-value, we need to multiply that by 2. Okay. So how do we find the p-value? Well, first, in order to find the p-value, we're going to first find out what is the value of when z, that, that test statistic, is going to be less than or equal to negative 0 0.46. And that's going to give us the area in one tail. So let me go ahead and move this over just slightly a bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is use stack, stack crunch to determine that p value. So we're going to open up stack crunch. Okay, we're going to go to stat, and since we're using the Z stat, we're going to go down to the normal distribution. Okay, and then we're going to put in our less than or equal to, and then we're going to put in our Z score of negative 0.46, and then compute. So there we get 0.3228, and I think they want us to round it to three decimal places, so this will be 0 0.323. So we get 0. 3, 2, 3. Now since we have two of them, two tails, that means we need to take 2 and then multiply it by 0 0.323, which is going to give us 0 0.646 as our p-value. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So 0 0.646, and there is our p-value. And now we need to state the conclusion. Okay, so since we found our p-value, the next step, okay, since we're making the decision, we're using this on the left side here, okay, because the right side is the critical value method. So here we're going to compare the p-value to the significance level. Well, the p-value is 0 0.646, and we're comparing it to alpha, which is 0 0.10. Well, we can see that it's greater than the significance level, and if it's greater than then that means that we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So I'm going to abbreviate this, fail to reject the null hypothesis. So now we need to state the conclusion. Okay, so recall here that for our conclusion, okay, we need to determine whether the original claim includes the equality sign or it does not. Well, when we look at the original claim, it includes the equality sign. So for the first two options, it says does not include equality. So we're going to eliminate those. Okay. Then we need to decide, okay, we know the original claim includes the equality. Now, did we fail to reject or reject? Well, we failed to reject the null. So it's not going to be this third one. So it's going to be this one here. Okay. So that's going to tell us what our, um, conclusion should be. We would fail to reject the null hypothesis and there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that buttered toast will land with the buttered side down 50% of the time. So we're going to say fail to reject the null hypothesis and again we said there is not sufficient evidence to this is warrant rejection of the claim that the buttered toast will land with the buttered side down 50% of the time. Check our answer, and there is our result. Okay, now the intent of the experiment was to test that the population proportion was going to equal 0 0.5, and that the alternative would have been that the proportion is greater than 0 0.5. And based on these results, we would say that there is not sufficient evidence to support of the claim that the buttered toast will land with the buttered side down more than 50% of the time. Check our answer, and there is our result. Now again, more than 50% of the time is the reason why we have the greater than for the intent answer.